Because you are great. Thank you, Lord, for sparing our life. For a new day that thou art granted unto us. And this is the day that you have made, Lord. And we come to rejoice and we come to be glad in it. Though we come with different minds and different hearts, and Lord, you know we come to rejoice. Oh God, we come because you cause us to be here. You know that we are going to be here in a fashion like this. You plan this, Lord. This is not a man plan. It's a God plan. Amen. And Father God, because you planned it, we turn up this morning. And we turn up to give you thanks for the life of our sister that you have given unto us for the few years that she has spent. Thank you, dear Father, for keeping her. Thank you, Lord, that she has known you and who to know is life eternal. Father God, let through this, somebody may know you, somebody may draw closer to you, and somebody may believe in you. Because some trust in chariot and some in horses, but let us, as we gather on this path of ground, remember, oh Lord God, because your name is a strong tower, and even through the circumstances of bereavement, we come to worship, we come to honor your name. Bless what we say and do today in this place. Honor your name among us, Lord. Glorify yourself through us. We invite the Holy Spirit right now to come and tabernacle with us. Bless what we say and do in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Now of the scripture lesson being read by Beverly Chambers. Is she here? When she comes, she will know the scripture. <laughs> The first lesson is reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, reading from verse 58 to 58. And we read. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit in corruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye 
at the last trump. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this incorruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall he be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O haze, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my brethren, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Here at the end, here end at the reading of God's so word. We honor it by saying, thanks be to God for his words. Okay, we are going to be moving on now with tributes. The first one here is Mrs. White, Lee Singer. Mrs. White, are you here? Okay, now, okay, Mrs. White is not here as yet, so let us move on. We're going to have the floor open now for some open tributes. So those who want to talk about this, share the if you can Open Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Sister Shirley. I know her for a good little while. She's a nice, quiet lady. On the um, before she passed off, I went by the house to visit them. The bread brother Charlie to do something for me. And while I was there, I said she sit down, sick, sad. I said, take it easy, Sister Shirley. God is good. He will help you through. Praise God. I don't want to a miserable lady in Bolas. But look at time I know her. Quiet, humble, jovial, nice lady. Praise God. And I don't know what it long. I love you, Sister Shirley. And may your soul rest in peace. May your soul rest in peace. Blow good breeze, family. Yeah. 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 Anybody, anybody else? The floor is open. Tribute from Miss Shirley. Okay, well. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, I know Sister Shirley from when I was very small, from my youth. She's, um, to say she's my second mother, so to speak. And from she was sick, I visited her in the hospital sometime. Brother Charlie helped me with fear and stuff to help her throw with all her sickness in the hospital, and I gladly you know, do my best to assist her. And I write a poem, and right now I like to express these words to, on behalf of she and everyone. Um, a poem written by me, Carly. A new world of magnificent adornment. Oh, friendly and sweet fragrance of the blossom. Oh, bitter the taste of rosebuds. Oh, sorry the taste of wonderful yielding fruits. But let alone the immorality of earthly deeds. Come, come away to a peaceful place of bubbling compassion. Sit at the feasting table and eat the bread of forgiveness. And drink the wine of spiritual healing and cleansing. Let the softness embrace you like the guardian's angels, as the silver sparkling dew like rain, baptize you with righteousness. Holiness escorts you to a new pathway that leads to salvation over a narrow golden bridge.
into a long-lasting paradise of eternity. A holy world of magnificent adornment. Holy, tired, and weary souls. Come, come away to rest in the bosom and comforting arms of tranquility. Breathe the air of peace and serenity. Feeling happy and free in the spirit filled this natural purity enveloped in divine intervention. Singing praises, join the voices of unique splendor. Playing the instruments of purest gold and finest silver. Redeem our souls and make us whole. A reviving melody that always embedded in the heart and soul of mankind. Amen. offer you something to drink. And she started asking about the family. She was indeed a family person. She tried everything to hold the family together. I remember when my mother passed on five years ago, which is her sister. She was one of the first one there. Every time you see her prayer, you see her teeth before you see her. Her teeth, Dad, how you do? What is believing firmly that she come in contact with Jesus Christ her maker Amen. because in this time you don't find people so humble because in Santa Cruz yesterday I was coming out on a small road to the main road and a taxi man was blocking me and he said just go for them let me pass behind you know and I can't have the language them every one of them were pink cell him tell me them 
And they look at him and they say, you should be in church Saturday and Sunday. Because one day can cover your sin. You understand? So it is no good that, and then again, gone are the days when people come a funeral and pretty up something. And then somebody have to look and say, let me say that this is somebody and I can't see where I'm Because when they talk, no match up. But if me attack, when they go so on, tell me. I want, want somebody to tell me, say, she have some displeasure with them and she don't confess it or she don't make it up and talk it over. She was a woman of peace, honesty, humility. She tried everything to win souls for the kingdom of God. She never have conversation with you and don't tell you about the cross. And I'm grateful that I can stand here to see it and to pay the last respect to my auntie. And I know she cannot hear me because I'm not stupid. I know the dead knows nothing. They perish until the great getting of morning. So we don't come to talk to her, we come to encourage one another. That we can take a page from her book. We can try a different way the way we are going is not seems to be the right way. Because the long and short of this, you know, God soon come. We have seen so much thing fulfilled in our very eyes that I was saying to my wife the other day, there is nothing happening now that frighten me. Because everything would have frightened people have before we are ready. So it is going on time. And Christ promised that in the end, when the going get tough and rough, his saints he will put to sleep. So I am of the opinion. I'm going to make you go and back in a pain because your faith might not be as true. Go to rest. So I'm grateful for the privilege. And see how God give us fair day. Look at the amount of rain we're getting from. And that great getting up morning. When the mist have rolled away. She will be in that first resurrection, made okay. new, yeah. and new Jerusalem descended. Yeah. Eden restored, mm -hmm. and with no art takes, no big yeah. 50,000 light because the, the Bible says that he promised, he promised eternal rest mm -hmm. to his faithful saints. So, believers, I'm encouraging you who have not made it in yet. To think about your way journey. So think about your soul salvation. God bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. As everybody can say and will say, Shirley, as we have actually known her, is a wonderful woman. I'm from Kent District, so I know her. She's a wonderful woman, and everything that is spoken of her today, it is so true. You will never meet Shirley, and she will not greet you with a smile. How you do? You are right, and she's so kind, meek, and gentle. May her soul rest in peace. Is Mrs. White here? Okay, come Mrs. White. Good afternoon to everyone. Yes, I am Uncle Charlie Nix. I am the third for his bigger brother. So I'm talking on behalf of my uncle, sister-in-law in England. To my beloved niece from Aunt Lillian, even though I am not close by, I want you to know by 
hearts are with you and the family at this sad time in loving memory of my beloved sister, Shirley. Now that you are gone, the pain and suffering has ended. My sister words cannot, cannot express how I feel right now, but one thing I can say, we may not be able to see each other because we are living miles apart from each other. But I know one day we will meet again. Deep in my heart, there are a special place where nothing at all has changed. It is filled with precious memories of you that could never fade away. And I will. each other but I know one day we will meet again yeah, deep in my heart there are special place where nothing at all has changed it is filled with precious memory of you that cannot That cannot change. It is filled with precious memories of you that never. <laughs> change. It will fill with precious memories of you that could never fade away. And I will cherish them dearly and always. We will meet again by God's grace, you and I. But until then, this is my sad goodbye. We will meet again in heaven above, as we will renew, reunite with the ones we love. Until then, you are unforgettable to me. May your soul rest eternal, perfect peace. We will all miss you dearly, my love. And sympathy goes out to my beloved husband. Your, to my, to your, Sympathy goes out to your beloved husband. I cannot imagine, imagine, imagine how he's feeling, but bless you for all the care and love you share with my sister. God bless you all. All from your sister Lillian in UK. Thank you all for listening. Have a blessed afternoon. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're going to change our position. We're going to sing a few larger choruses because, as everybody testified up here, Shirley was a lively and joyful person. So, we're going to change our position by standing up when we sing two choruses when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all Jesus, I'm going to sing and show the victory. Let us all stand. We're going to sing when we all get to heaven. When we all get to heaven.
dead. I'm going away. Surely he's gone on before us. But someday, we too will be going away. We don't know how, we don't know when, but we all will be going away. Some sweet day. So let us sing now. Some sweet day. I'm going away. Are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done, 
I am Alpha and Omega, at the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Seven and last, he that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Here is a portion of God's word. Amen. Thanks be to God for his words. Yes. Brother Horace. Brother Harris, you can come with your tribute now, and after Brother Harris, we will have a list of sins there. So please come in the order that your name was called. Yeah. Oh, yes. Thank you very much. Uh, I just been here. All is alarm right from where I'm coming from, but for the sake of this college, um, this story is a very good person, a very good friend of mine. We're just living outside of uh, Stony Hill. So it's really a long ride to be here. I actually asked Mr. Nelson one time if we were lost, but then, you know, I said he would have been here before and know where he's going. But grateful to be here, to be alive. In a time in which we're having homelessness in our country, but because we live, we can face tomorrow. Just a bit. Sorry, we didn't get to bring Tom to play the keyboard along with us. But another, if another time I get a chance to come this side of the world, we'll. God sent his son, they call him Jesus. He Just to buy my pardon and empty grace is there to prove my Savior is. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow just because. It is the land where we'll never 
Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I've never really met Sister Shirley, but this is family. His nephew are my friends, you know. Um, Danny, bye. <laughs> and Sam. 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 And, and um, one of his nephews, they call him Brian Kibbit, you know. So the family. Come, give life, he take it away, he is the potter. Sister, 
be saying? My father. Sure it is. She and me said, they will need them the Lord. I put a foot bam bam. And chat. I went to our God. And have dialogue with him. The God said, it's not the head. It's not the head that one hat is it get it. You understand? Yes. Yes. Meaning to say, this uh, sister before her she wanted to, to marry, but she never get it. So she didn't get it before. You understand that? As, as time goes on, as time goes on, I be myself like Joseph. I repeat, as time goes on, I, I be myself as like Joseph. Two witnesses. Along with myself, take, 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 or take us to my officer. The mighty officer never said to me, Tell me five far. He said to me, Till death, you are smart. The Lord give it, and the Lord take it. Blessed is the name of the Lord. If they talk away, they talk with them, they have to take the same two ways of my song. Only if they talk. She become the head to me, you know, of the way. And nurse her. And nurse her. I tell you, best girl. She's not sure. I tell you, best girl. Come and be a little bit, come back and be a little bit, you know. Yes. 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 Strange. Strange. I can be for me. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. I say, help me. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. So we'll just make, make shift. 
Good afternoon, everyone. If I can help somebody as I pass along, then my living shall not be in vain. If I can do my duty, spread love's message, then my living shall not be in vain. When I was a stranger, naked, sick, in prison, then the king will answer and say to them, truly I say to you, to the extent that you did to one of these brothers and sisters, he will did it unto me. Good evening, my name is Gwendolyn Davis. I just want to use two words to summarize the life of the late deceased. I met her through her granddaughter, Topaz. I don't know if Topaz is here this time. When I surgeon at St. Catherine High School, she was a student there. So I get to know Mrs. McFarlane and Mr. McFarlane. Two words I want to use to really remember her. The word, words are kindness and peace. Very kind woman. Her kindness extended to me about, about in 2017 or so. But I remember when she was sick and then she came to, she was in the Spanish town hospital. And then while she was coming home, I told her daughter Beverly, whom I happen to know very well because of two parts, to allow her to stay at my house because I live near a way down the bottom than to come away up here. So she came there when she was um, discharged from the hospital. She came this Thursday, and uh, Miss Beverly had to had something. I have, I have an appointment, but Miss Beverly had something important, so I gave up my to allow her to go. So she went, and then I, she stayed there this, the Friday, and the Friday evening, her daughter came for her. But during that time, I played the role of a nurse. I'm not a nurse, I'm a teacher by profession. I played the role of a nurse. And what happened, she was so peaceful because she had a stroke, she couldn't um, talk. Was when we prayed for her, she was beating the reading. She would be beating the reading. And there was no um, uncomfortableness or anything. There was that peace I noticed. So I assisted her the night, the Thursday night. Beverly slept at the house. And the Friday morning, I got up and I rode upstairs, downstairs. By truck, and I was so tired because of made provision for our breakfast and everything. But what came out of that, it was so peaceful. And the kindness part of it, Beverly and I had conversation. And she said to me, our mom said to her, mom, Mama, you know that people take you for granted and use you and abuse you. Her mother said to her, <laughs> Make them stay there. Me and God pick me. They can't do me anything. Me, me come here and do good. And we better continue doing good. Them, them and God, we talk. We are continue to do good. Yes, those were her words. And these are words that we can have and keep them. But I all pick me down. The, the peace part of it. I remember about last month. Now it's what, October, yes. Beverly called me and said, um, my mommy is in the hospital. I said, what? And then I felt the urge to go and visit her. I live in Royal Place, somewhere on the other side of going up to the other side of St. Catherine, going up to Dovecott. So it's the other side of St. Catherine. And there was this urge. I was coming home, so I went to Lindsfield. Beverly and I met there. And uh, she couldn't speak again. But I went inside and I read Psalm 23. Didn't know that it was the last time. But there was a song, and I can't sing another singer, so I'm not going to sing up here to this place anybody. The gentleman did so very well. So I, I, I read Psalm 23, and she, 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 she couldn't speak, but she was there nodding to me. She responded in a positive way. And uh, there was a song, I'm not going to sing it. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, because we laugh until you would crack up the sin. So I'm not going to sing. So I'm going to ask me to sing. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, 
Jesus. And what he has done for me. My heart cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. So I keep on singing it, but I'm not singing it here. And it's sad, and it's just cheeky. Um, giving the rhythm. Making the rhythm, what they're making. So that I, 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 I felt um, impressed, so I continued talking with her. And I spent a few days. That was the last Thursday I met her at Lindsay. Then I got another call again. Because I keep talking to Beverly. I lost my mother then, and we are good friends because of two person working there as a good parent. She called me and was trying to get through to me, couldn't get through because sometimes this technology is not right. So she called another friend, Beverly Chambers. Beverly is right over there. Beverly tried to get me, did not get me neither. Then one of my church sisters told me. So I called Beverly. Since then, I've been talking with her, walking with her through everything. So at this time, as you go through and you are feeling pain and everything, pray that God will give you the grace. Today, her voice is silent. Silent. She's here no more, the deceased. But her soul is with the Lord because she made, met her, her God before she left earth. To the family, to the husband, to who are the relatives and you're grieving? Yes, grief is healthy for you to grieve as you, it is not a problem to solve, it, it is not a process, it's, it, it's a process you are going through. Go through the process, go through the Lord promises that He's going to walk with you through. Can I read with you two verses of scripture? St. John 27, um, 14, verse 27. My peace I leave with you, not as the world gives you. But I give you a peace. This is an abiding peace, a peace that transcends death. And then to the children, to Beverly, as you mourn, yes, a part of you is broken, a part of you is gone, a part of you is missing. I miss my mother, 16 years ago, my mother died. And I cried, I cried, I cried. In everything, it's not because of any guilt or anything, but it's natural. Psalm 103, verse 17 says, but the loving kindness of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children, children. There is a blessing that follow people and the kindness and the goodness that the deceased left will live on forever. Those of us who are here, and you have never trusted Jesus Christ. You have never come in contact with the Christ of Calvary. Today, it's time for you to do that. Today, it's time for you to reflect. Death comes, takes our loved one. It leaves us sad. It's time for us to go home and reflect. I don't know who is the next one. Maybe I don't know because I'm getting ready. I'm living in a, in a state of readiness. So nobody called my phone. Nobody, anytime you call my phone, you either pray or nobody, no negative come to my phone. I, my phone is quarantined. Yes. My phone is, it, it, it is quarantined. Nobody called my phone to tell me anything. My phone doesn't answer neither. Let me say something to you. She has lived her life and her task is finished on earth. Every man is given enough length of days to finish the task. And when the task is finished, then it's time for you to go. The Lord bless you. Amen. 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 Afternoon. Well, I'm not Jenny's wife. My name is Tamara White. And Shirley is my grand aunt in law because here is my handsome grand uncle, because my grandfather died years ago. He's the smallest of the nine. So when I think of Aunt Shirley, because that's what we call her, the quote that came to me was by Margaret Tasha. I said, Power is being a lady. If you have to tell people you are, then you aren't. And I think that is so 
depicting her because when you see, if you know Miss Shirley, she was that lady. On September the 28th, 1953, a beautiful, bouncing princess was born to the late Mr. and Mrs. Wilkes. They named her Edna Millicent Wilkes. She was affectionately called Miss Shirley, and she was born in a small community of Kentish. The union had three, two hundred kids, one sister, her brother and sister, Tom, and there she lived and grew to Kentish all day school, where she attained her grade, grade nine standard. <coughs> Miss Shirley, her mother died at a tender age, and as such, she was left to look after her father, which she did with great pride and joy until he died. However, based on our duties, she did not attain any further education. Miss Shirley, as you have heard my grandfather said, my grandmother said, that he didn't met her by fault or met her at the bridge. He met her in church. He was a Christian, handsome gentleman, and when he met Miss Shirley, he invited her to come in church with him. Six months after they married, on the 15th of August, 1976, at the Bay Baptist Church, Miss Shirley had two kids, boy and a girl, Beverly and her brother, and she came to live in Wonder Bowlers with Uncle Charlie here, and the couple raised both kids. They did farming where they had livestock such as chicken, goats, pigs, and if anyone should know, Miss Shirley is a good cook. And there she left. She and Uncle Charlie did their thing. Miss Shirley was very dedicated, lovely, kind-hearted woman of God who loved the Lord. She helped various persons in this community, whether they were senior or Christian. She would love to clean and cook and take care of children when the community members got sick and had to go to hospital. Miss Shirley was kind to everyone. It didn't matter who you was, what class you were, or if you were not. Um, Beverly, this resonated with her, so you would have heard the lady said it in the remembrance, but I'll repeat it, and she said, she asked her mom, why is it that people is always using her? And she said, let them continue, because I'm a child of God. Miss Shirley loved her husband so much that she would not leave him to go far for long, and that is a testimony because that was like my grandfather too. You could never get them to stay apart. If Miss Shirley had to come to town, they would have to carry her back because they are not staying apart. The couple were married for four, six years. They tried to have one child, but the Lord would not have it, so they did have one together. But Shirley is their beautiful daughter. And so, I know that my mom was highly respected and highly thought of. And those in attendance today by the whole community, she will be missed dearly. And we all know that she's in a better place, but mom, we surely do miss you. Sleep tight, mom. Sleep tight, Miss Shirley. God bless you all. Thank you for staying with them. Jesus was brought me from darkness 
to die. So everybody have to meet them appointment. This is the last chapter of earth here on earth, physically. As of from today, she gone to find her teeth. Only thing is left of her is memories. And memories don't leave like people do. They always stay with you, whether they're good or bad. Yes. That's the memory that we have left of her. Yes. So you reminisce in the memories of her. But today, we put her away in style. Not a person known of my of me, but family member as our sister here. And being here at the past of the Four Square Gospel Church in Kent Village, Babylon, and I minister, nice minister, so they asked me to come and do our final order. I just want to be short, and many people don't like to hear the word of God. Many times when we have funeral services, everybody starts to preach one more time. Preach or preach. But let me tell you something. The word is the word that will take you out. And the word take you in and it's going to take you out. I just want to give a story of, of, of a, a young man in St. Mark chapter 2 who was paralyzed from who the move? His friend have to take him anywhere he wants to go. And Jesus turned up in the community. And they heard that Jesus was there. And four men decided to take him to church. The first man who decided to take him to church was a young man who was possessed by the devil. The Bible said that this man was chained and they carried him to the graveyard and tied him up and they burst the chain. They could not hold him. And no matter where they want to take you, if you're a child of God, no chain can hold him. The devil is a liar from the pit of hell. They're trying to chain your children, trying to chain them in all kinds of things. They put out your nail pump and carry my booty on great side. So let me tell you something. It's God be for you. Tell me who can be against you. It's God on your side. No hell. Can't hold it up. And they try everything that they can to change this young man. And the Bible said him, sometimes he cries. And sometimes we cry when we go through trials and testing and our day some pain. We cry when we lose our loved one to the grave. We cry when we see things not going our way. And the Bible said, they hear him up in the mountain and cry and he cut himself. Yes. But oh, what the difference when Jesus passed by? Jesus passed by and the young man accepted the Lord and was changed and his life come around and he went to this paralyzed man and he said to him, listen, we can carry to somebody we know. We know him to feel himself. And somebody tell me about him. And you better know Jesus for yourself. And somebody tell him. And Jesus, oh, what a difference. When Jesus passed by. And those that are living here or far, Jesus is passing this way. And he's passing this way today. And today, if you hear his voice, the Bible says, oh, And the Bible said that there was a next young man. His hand was withered. You know, you don't you know people are handicapped, we call them. Yes. And then why come at church with a handicapped hand? Yes. And then turn up at church all the while. But one morning, Jesus come to church. Yes. You never know the morning when Jesus yes. come to church. So come all the while. He's going to turn up for you one day. And the Bible said that when the young man and Jesus look at him, Jesus said, stretch for the hand. He said, that hand, yeah, this hand can, but this one can't. This no no way I'll chance it. Jesus said to him, said, stretch out the hand. Oh, somebody needs to stretch out to Jesus. And the Bible said that when he stretch out the man, he hear the bones of the 
move one by one. And oh, he lift his hand and begin to praise God. Oh, and somebody you need to tell somebody, give me pause. Let me pray to God. Because you don't know when Jesus is with me. One to me has one prisoner. But Jesus, look on the Lord. That's God. So they tell him, come and say, look on me today. We can carry to somebody whom we know. And then uh, all of a sudden, a uh, yeah. blind man, a blind man walk in uh, yes. on wood and said, Yes, we can talk of him. Once I was blind, but no, I can see. You understand? I was out there blind, uh, no, no, nothing. And Jesus passed my way. And when he passed my way, he asked me if I want to receive my sight. And I said, what? You can give me the sight? He said, yes, Jesus. Jesus, give him insight. I hear the brother talking about Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus is a testimony too. Zacchaeus wanted to meet Jesus and everybody in the crowd was in his wheel. The Bible said he didn't go out to your wheel. Some of you have to go out to your wheel to meet Jesus because Jesus go out to your wheel to meet you. But then you have to go out to your wheel to meet Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish. They come into church. They come into church, brother. And the Bible said there was one the Bible said Lazarus was dead and passed out before he went away to the grave. The Bible said that the, the sister said to Jesus and said, Jesus, the one that you love is dead, is sick, and come. Jesus said, make him stay a little while. And the Bible said, Jesus lingered. And then they said back to Jesus, said, no worry, come and gone. In passed out. Jesus said, me a come still because I am the resurrection. Mary and Martha said, Master, where him then? You know what I'm going to You're four years later. Let me tell you something. Jesus is an untimed God. He makes his special eyes in things that seems is somebody going through something that seems impossible. I know a man that fixes it for you all. His name is Jesus. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? This is not washed. This is a woman. I'm going to the land where we never go. And the Bible said that when Lazarus turned up, and the young man, yeah, no more four of them. Lazarus tell the young man, let me tell you about the same Jesus who we have there. When me was in the grave, wrapped up, tie up. With man, man, man made something. The Bible said that Jesus turned to Mary and Martha said, Just show me where Just carry me up. And some of us have been roughed up. And some of us have been tied up. And some of us have been tapped up in all kinds of things. So Tampi has said, Then tie you up and all kinds of rough up. But I know a man who can lose you. I know a man who can set you free.
me a rock for pride no found no Christian. That is me. And that's what God wants from you. Yes. Rock you, tie you up, tie you up, and only him can lose you. Yes. And him done with you. Yes. And by the said Lazarus, tell Mary said to Jesus, in his thing yes. by now. Yes. Yes. Sometimes your situation stink. Yes. You want to yes. yes. know about you. You yes. want community yes. yes. about you. You want community yes. have your, your name CDC. Yes. But when we tell us something, when you come to Jesus, you have to say, Look, and then look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. And Jesus touched us. Call Lazarus by name. And he's calling your name. He called me by name. He never called me your name and me turn up. I rub with that. And a thief can buy me. He called me by name and he's calling you by name. And sometimes you hear his voice, but you're all near. And stick in your leg. Go on like you know here. But let me tell you something. Whether you hear or from here, whether you go over there, so if your name not written in the long book of life, hell be your portion. See how we saw. And Lazarus, tell the man said, Listen, we can take you to somebody we know. They went because many wrapped up, tie up, tangled up, and Jesus said, Lose him, lose him, and I lose somebody inside here today. Be loose and set free by the power and the power of Jesus Christ. Lose him and set him free. Trust in God. God is a provider. Yes. And before the man stood down, listen to the four testimony. And it, he, he said, Take me to the take me to the altar. Yes. Take me. You know what I'm Take me to the just leave me there. When they reach at the door, the door was blocked. There were so many people there at the church that the door was blocked. There was no passageway for him to come in. They must say, You should have come earlier at church. They did not get seen. You want to maybe you want to touch Jesus too. And they don't say, It's a sick man. When you don't visit me sick too, and you want to heal him. You know, someone in the hospital, sometimes we're cussing nurse and doctor because we're sick. And there was something, sometimes people are like, No, I'm telling you before you. Some people are from 4 30. But you come, no one just ready, ready, and doctor for ready for you. That's God. Say God, tell me he took up. And the Bible said that the virgin then said, All right, it's going to be a rough ride. Yes. Christianity is not an easy road, it's a rough ride. Yeah, no. They 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 are telling back that it's sweet and they make it, but it's a rough ride. The tough virgin, the going get tougher, and the real seeds hard to climb. But we started out with you a long time, a long journey. This I hear the brothers say, away from Oxford, he he must come a long time ago, and we make up our minds, so we now carry him home like this. And the Bible say, come, you will carry him up on the roof, and then carry him up on the roof, brother, and then pull out some zip up here and right in front. To Jesus, shake your hand up and lure him to Jesus. Take me to the cross and leave me there. Oh, and the, the Bible said that when they put him down, yes. I hear Jesus say, These men that put you down here, yes. they have faith, yes. and the faith yes. of them yes. shall yes. heal you. Yes. Shall yes. heal you. The songwriter said, when Jesus comes, the tempter's power is broken. When Jesus comes, our tears are wiped away. He changes the gloom and fill your heart with treasure. When Jesus comes to stay, he turned to the man and said, take up your bed and walk. Somebody needs to take up from where you is. And start walk to Jesus. Start walk to Jesus. Start glorifying because some trust in chariot and some in horses. But David said, I will remember the name of the Lord of God. The name of the Lord is the strong tower and the righteous. This is not can't say it. The righteous. You have to come on out. You have to shine up. The righteous run to him and they are saved. So I ask the question in closing. Do you know him? Have you been to Jesus? There is still power in the blood. 
there is still power in the blood. And the blood of Jesus can cleanse. It comes to cleanse every sin. Because the fire is still at the rich of God. And it flows from the highest mountain. And no, I tell you, no matter which valley you are into, it can reach you to the lowest valley. The blood will give you power from day to day. And it never loses. Never lose. Because Jesus is the one. He is the one. Before I close, is there someone inside here? You don't have to come on the altar. Just raise your hand and I'll pray for you. Want to know Jesus. This man who Lazarus talk about. This man who the crippled man talk about. This man who Zacchaeus talk about. This man who the blind man said. I get this moment when I say, no. Me, the blind man, never see me when they die. And now, they go, you know, you know, some people, they never see when they, when they, when they were out in that scenario. As I become a Christian, they pass the check me. And, and, but let me tell you something. I got saved very young. And me got show, me got dance. I come from St. Mary, a place they call Enfield, beyond another day. I born at another day hospital. At the age of 18, I was at town and we have a thing they call settlement, an open lot, where we have independent celebration. Mary go wrong, thank you, right? Nobody has seen all of them. Um, just for good all kind of folk, and little children in the free of them, mascot and all those things. And I, and Jan Kuno, and I live in town. And I decided to lay down St. Mary. Just buy me car. Just get me lights on the age of I want to old angler. For you young people who don't know what you and, and all those things and, 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 and listen. But, but there was a thing they called Angler and Cortina. An old escort and, 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 and little bug. Yeah. And buy one little angler. And they have a country now. Load up car with the whole of me. We are called on my country. And when we go down there virtually night catch you, I mean never like the song. The song sound like jump on. And I look across the hill. The Bible said I will lift up my hands unto the hill. Prophets come in my head. I look across the hill and I saw a light on the top of the hill. And I have said, What is that light? And they said, One church of one campsite up there. So he said, I go for camp. Yes, <laughs> and that is the last dance we go. Because when we reach up a camp, you know. I'm stamping right at the tent. Me hear the preacher man start my sermon. Right. He just switch right in the door and he just switch around to me. And I say, where the man you have to stop? And where the preacher man you have to go with? And, and all he needed, me be here back to me. I have to put it behind because the man has talked about me until he be here back to me. <laughs> and before the man could have done, you understand? Know, Before you go to the preach, we reach a altar. Because of me, I can All to Jesus, I surrender. All to Him, I freely give. And from that day on today, 40 years after, look what the Lord has done with that 18 year old. But you buy the college. And all these things. But it is not. It's not an easy life. We can't tell you that. But we hold on to Jesus. Hold on to God. And change your life. Lift your hand for those who are praying. Father, you know the intent of these hearts. They need you, Lord. They need you now more than ever. Their life is going through a stormy weather. And Father God, we ask you to step out on the sea of their Galilee and speak peace, be still to somebody like you. Father God, they see you like a ghost, but when they saw that it was you, Lord, they surrender. Let somebody surrender this day to you. Forgive them of their sin. Cleanse them from all unrighteousness. Write their name in the long book of life. That even one day they will be like this, what we are doing, Lord. We can, if you can say, my name is written there. 
But today, Lord, the question is asking, is their name written there? They come to you this moment to write their name by faith in the book of life. Accept them now in your kingdom. Forgive them of their sin in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask the family members to stand. But please, I'm going to pray for the family. And us, husband, was special. God is a good God. You understand? And what He done for others, He will do for you. And with arms wide open, He will pardon you. Because you is not no secret. You're not coming here by secret. No man enter this earth by secret. Any day God say, Whoa, I'm not in charge of this world. So you know they are by surprise. God bring you here. Though you might have come here out of wedlock. God prepared the man and the woman to bring you here. And by chance, it's not by accident. You are here. You are here by purpose. And if you come here for a purpose, fulfill your purpose. That you can go home and hear well done, no good and faithful servant. What we had family. Father, the family of our dear sister Shirley standing here, in laws, children, niece, nephew, brothers, sisters. Near and far, looking towards the Lord. Thank you for their life that you leave behind. Guide and protect them. You promise that you will never leave them nor forsake them. Be their guide, be their protector, be their shield. Oh God, you promise that you will give them pastors free. Keep them in the bond of your peace, Lord. Let your angel, O oh God, build a fence around them. O oh God, let it draw a sword that no weapon by tongue, by man doing, or by anything form against them will prosper because you are fear God. And they that trust in you, Lord, shall be like Mount Zion that shall not be removed but abided forever. Let them to continue abiding you, Lord. Keep them in the bond of your peace and let your Holy Spirit continue to guide, protect, supply the needs thereof, Lord, physically, financially, spiritually, and emotionally. Unite them together as one. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, we go now. All bearers, we're going to sing the final hymn and then Hello. And first, I would like to a participant of this funeral who have done their best and their children. So I say thank you. Thank you. Yes, All right, the M.
Lord. All right, we're going to pray. And then for our sister that you have given unto us, you are lend unto us, and you take God that you may bless the family that will leave behind and the loved one continue to be done on earth as you said. It's the Paul Bearers needs to as much as is out of this world. I commit her us to whom the sick and the earth shall give up the body of those who sleep in him, but to the Almighty. Yes, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. 
Yeah, yeah. 